How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and with so much doom and gloom going around, I've actually got some good news for a change. Actually, huge news, I would consider it. So maybe we'll make this a theme in future videos with so much bad news in the world. You know, I'll try to make some videos with good news. And if you read the title of the video, you might not realize how big of a deal this is going to be. So I'll try to explain why you should care and why it actually is awesome that we're getting this new spectrum. You see, very soon, in the United States at least, and probably elsewhere in the world as a result, we're going to be getting a new band of radio frequencies that will be allowed to be used for Wi-Fi. This is the first time this has happened since 2009 when the 5 gigahertz spectrum was opened up for 802.11n. So this is kind of a big deal. It hasn't happened in a while. So in addition to the existing 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz that can be used for Wi-Fi, we're also going to be getting a new 6 gigahertz spectrum. And specifically, let me read this so I know it's correct. It's going to be 5.925 to 7.125 gigahertz range, and it will be opened up for unlicensed use, meaning it doesn't have to just be used for Wi-Fi, but that'll probably be the main use. Now you might be wondering, why is this such a big deal and is it even going to make a difference on a day-to-day -day basis? And the answer is yes. You might not understand all of it. I'll try to explain it in a way that is easy to understand, but regardless if you understand it, devices that you buy like upcoming phones, that sort of thing, will be able to take advantage of it and it will improve your experience with those devices, whether you know what it is or not. But to understand why it is a big deal, you first have to understand what we are dealing with now. So first, the oldest and most common Wi-Fi band is 2.4 gigahertz. Every router will at least have the 2.4 gigahertz band, and then a lot will also be dual band and will have the 5 gigahertz, which I'll get to next. But the problem with 2.4 gigahertz is in addition to being very common, it's also very tiny, only 100 megahertz wide. So that means there is a lot of interference because a lot of people use it, and it's not that much radio spectrum. You see, when you go and set up a router, it has to choose which channel it's going to broadcast on. A channel is just a sub block within the given spectrum. And with 2.4 gigahertz, there are only three non-overlapping channels a router can choose, either one, six, or 11 within that, that 100 megahertz spectrum. And you can imagine if you're in like an apartment complex or even a neighborhood, that there are probably gonna be a lot more than three routers in a given area. So that means there is gonna be a lot of competition and therefore interference between these routers. It's gonna degrade the signals. But even more problematic is with 2.4 gigahertz, not just Wi-Fi uses it. It's also used by Bluetooth, car alarms, cordless phones, smart home devices, even microwave ovens can put off some 2.4 gigahertz interference. Really the only advantage of 2.4 gigahertz is because it's a lower frequency and therefore longer wavelength, it can travel further and has better like wall penetration. So it can go further in your home, but that also has a problem where because it's so common and it can travel through more things, that means you're gonna get more interference from neighbors. So it's very common, it's very crowded, and you're gonna get more interference from things that are farther away. So it's kind of not a great combination. On the other hand though, we have five gigahertz, which your router may also support, which is pretty much better than 2.4 gigahertz in almost every way. Of course, it doesn't have quite as much range as 2.4 gigahertz because it's a higher frequency. However, a lot of times that difference is more than made up by the increased speed capacity of five gigahertz. Five gigahertz is also way wider, 10 times wider to be exact than the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum because 2.4 is only 100 megahertz, whereas 5 gigahertz, you get the entire 5 gigahertz band. So for example, while 2.4 gigahertz only has three non-overlapping channels, the 5 gigahertz band has 24 non-overlapping channels, assuming a 20 megahertz bandwidth on each channel. So that's actually why in another video I talked about why whenever you get the chance, you should use 5 gigahertz instead of 2.4 gigahertz because there's so much more space in that range and you're not gonna get nearly as much interference as if you're trying to use the 2.4 crowded gigahertz range. However, one important thing to note is a lot of times routers to increase speed, especially with 5 gigahertz where there is more space, they will combine two or more channels into one channel. So they may use two 20 megahertz channels and make it into one 40 megahertz channel. But even still, in the five gigahertz range, even if you combine it into 40 megahertz or even 80 megahertz channels, that's still 12 
and six channels respectively that are non-overlapping, which is still even combining them more than the three 20 megahertz channels you get with 2.4 gigahertz. So it's so much more space. However, there is one major problem with the five gigahertz band, which are so-called DFS channels. You see, while there are so many five gigahertz channels, not all of them can be used because most of them actually are so-called dynamic frequency selection channels. And these channels are actual specific bands within the five gigahertz band that are using the same frequencies as radar devices. So the government said, okay, we'll give you for Wi-Fi the five gigahertz band, but because this is also shared with radar and important applications, they made a law so that if there is a router that is using one of these DFS channels, then it must have programming in there where if it detects radar signals coming in, it has to switch off the Wi-Fi if it's using that channel and either switch to another channel probably or just stop broadcasting. So if you were to live near an airport or something, you definitely would not want to use a DFS channel because it would just interfere with it so much it wouldn't be worth it to use these and you'd have to use one of the non-DFS channels in five gigahertz. And actually within the 24 non-overlapping channels with five gigahertz, actually 16 of them are DFS channels, leaving only eight of them to be non-DFS, meaning you can use it without having to worry about radar interrupting it. But a big problem as a result of this is a lot of routers, because of this complication, they just don't even bother allowing you to select DFS channels. So a lot of times, even if you don't live anywhere near an airport or you don't have to worry about radar interrupting at all, you might not even be able to use most of the five gigahertz bandwidth, even if you wanted to. So as you can imagine, even though the five gigahertz spectrum is way Way bigger than the 2.4 gigahertz, it effectively only has eight channels that you can use in any case. Now, eight is still better than the three on 2.4 gigahertz, but still, there's a lot that is really interrupted. And considering a lot of times when using five gigahertz, most of the time these routers are gonna be combining two channels into one into 40 megahertz, that only allows four channels of 40 megahertz, so there's not as much spectrum as you might think. However, with all that in mind, in comes the six gigahertz band, which will introduce 1200 megahertz more of spectrum space that will be used for unlicensed use, meaning that any device, including Wi-Fi, will be able to use it. And this 1200 megahertz is five times, more than five times the amount of effective bandwidth that we have now if you exclude the DFS channels. And one important thing is this new six gigahertz band does not have any of this DFS nonsense to worry about. So you can use the entire band and this is so wide, it amounts to an additional 14 80 megahertz channels. So to put this in perspective, even as wide as the five gigahertz band is, excluding DFS channels, it can only fit two 80 megahertz channels and the 2.4 gigahertz band can only support one 80 megahertz channel. So we're getting many more channels and each of these channels has many times more bandwidth. So it's like a double whammy. And sometimes with higher end routers, you can even combine channels into 160 megahertz channels. And even with those, you can still fit seven of them in the six gigahertz band. Now, one thing to keep in mind is yes, six gigahertz is a higher frequency than the what we have now. So that will mean there's gonna be less range for it slightly and less wall penetration but that's not all bad because that means you're in turn going to get less interference from neighbors, especially ones that are further away. So that means because there's less interference, you'll be able to use wider bands without interference, which will probably more than cancel out the difference in range you'll get. So yes, within your own home, you might get a slightly less signal, but that'll be a less signal on a much faster speed considering it can use much more bandwidth, so it'll probably more than cancel it out and be a net benefit. Also remember that these days, mesh router networks are a lot more available to consumers. So you can just place a lot of these access points around your home, and unlike having an extender where you have to disconnect from one router and reconnect to the extender, the benefit of a mesh router network is your device will automatically switch between the closest access point. It's all part of the same network. So because those are so much available, even if you don't have as good signal range within your own house, you can add more of these access points if you have one of these systems. So that way you'll have a faster speed and fine signal across your entire home. Now you might be wondering, how is this new spectrum gonna work in terms of device compatibility? And actually the Wi-Fi Alliance who defines these specs for Wi-Fi 
already announced the specs for the upcoming Wi-Fi 6, which you may have heard of. It's like the next gen of Wi-Fi, but that uses 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. But the Wi-Fi Alliance has already created a new naming system called Wi-Fi 6E, which will distinguish between devices that can only do Wi-Fi 6 using 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz, that'll be Wi-Fi 6 devices. If you see something that says Wi-Fi 6E, then it will not only be able to support 2.4 and, and five gigahertz, but also six gigahertz devices. So not every single device will probably support six gigahertz, just like not every device even supports five gigahertz at this point, but the fact that the band does exist means that at least for some devices that you really want high reliability and less interference on, that will be an option. And it will definitely help with crowding and future-proofing the Wi-Fi spectrum in the future. Now, technically the FCC in the United States has not done the final vote on this new spectrum to be approved for unlicensed use. However, it has so much support even within the FCC that it is very much expected to be passed within the month. So depending on when you're watching this, it might've already happened. But because this is so new, we likely won't see any new Wi-Fi 6E devices anytime in the near future. However, some companies like Broadcom have already been working on chipsets that will be able to use the six gigahertz spectrum. And they expect those to be probably finalized around 2021. So we probably won't see any new Wi-Fi 6E devices at least until then. But still, the fact that we're getting it at all is very exciting and not even something I was expecting to see anytime soon. So anyway, if you guys wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is one where I talk about the next upcoming generation of Wi-Fi, which I mentioned, which is Wi-Fi 6. And I'll put that video link right here, where I talk about the three biggest changes in Wi-Fi 6 from the current generation and why it is kind of a big deal. So definitely recommend watching that and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.